I want to tell you about a heart attack I suffered recently. Now this is a little cathartic and definitely a bit of therapy. However, if you think you have symptoms of a heart attack or chest pain, please don't use this episode to find out. I'm not medically trained, so dial your local emergency response number and get yourself looked at by an expert. We'll still be here later, so you can come back when you're ready. Now, this is a watch enthusiast channel, so we'll definitely weave in my watch journey over the past few weeks while this is all unfolding. But I want to describe the factors leading up to the event and hopefully leave you with a happy ending and some good information that could help you or someone you know. So grab yourself a cup of tea, find a comfy chair and let's get into it. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. Now this channel is about me and my watch collecting journey, an amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and why not share it with your friends, family and colleagues? It may just save their lives and you never know, help them become future watch enthusiasts. As always, check out my Instagram where I post regularly at The English Watch and my website, theenglishwatch.com, where I post less regularly, but there's still plenty there to enjoy. And also check out some of the links below and leave any comments. OK, now that's out of the way. I want to start by thanking all of you for the kind and thoughtful comments I've received recently. I'd also like to thank Peter for initially reaching out and asking if I was OK. This means so much to me and shows what a great community we have. It's so very much appreciated. So, about that heart attack. About two weeks ago, when on holiday in Orlando, I suffered what the cardiologist describes as a myocardial infraction. Sorry, a myocardial infarction, or MI. A genuine heart attack where the supply of blood to the heart is suddenly blocked, usually by a blood clot, and in my case, plaque buildup in an artery around the heart. Pretty important. Now this plaque buildup didn't happen overnight and I can't blame a single event or situation, but it's clear to me that the internal time bomb was due to blow and I've managed to accumulate quite a lot of stress over the weeks before that may have just been enough for the old ticker to raise the white flag. I guess the slightest thing can set these things off, but I was certainly stressed out and pushed through where rest was probably the best course of action. Now at the end I'll run through some classic symptoms, ones I wish I hadn't ignored. So let's look at the build-up, weave in a few watches and draw some conclusions that I hope will help someone else in a similar situation to me. Now, back in 2018, before the channel was even a thing, I was given a clean bill of health by my GP. He said I had a 5% chance in 10 years of a heart attack. Now I'll take that, I thought. And even though my blood pressure was a little high and my cholesterol was on top of the range, who was I to argue with the doctor? Now, I'm a little over 50 years old. I'm five foot eight, weight a little bit more than some, but a lot less than others. You know, I cycle, I walk daily in the evening, and I go to the gym a couple of times a week. So not too bad. We have a good diet and don't eat too many takeaways. And I gave up smoking over 22 years ago. I have a few glasses of wine through the week, so generally feel pretty well. Looking back, are there any telltale symptoms that could have alerted me earlier? I'd say the biggest pointer for me is getting out of breath easily. Not when exercising, strangely, but running upstairs or talking and running out of breath. Minor points, but worth noting. Now, these aren't things that would immediately have me grabbing the phone and dialing 999, but, you know, worth looking for anyway. I remember sitting at this desk, um, yeah, you're working away through the lockdown, a door would ring, maybe Amazon, you'd run downstairs and you'd run back up, you think, oh, I'm out of breath. Is that right? Not sure. That's how it always is. Or is it? Keep an eye on that. So, roll on to summer 2022. Both my sons have just finished their exams, so my youngest son gets his prom finally, and in some style as well, looking good. And my eldest son gets his chosen rite of passage, a long weekend in Magaluf with his mates. <laughs> where's Neil? He is literally incredible. Now, other than wishing him well, our one significant piece of advice is don't lose your passport, as his return flight was within a week of us travelling to Florida. Now, of course, he lost his passport. Somewhere between the airport and the hotel. What we have now is probably the most stressful week of my life, trying to A, get an emergency travel document to get him home, and B, and what seemed like impossible at the time, get him a new passport in less than a week so we could all go on holiday. 
Now it's fair to say that tears were shed and nerves were shattered over that week. But we did get to enjoy some hospitality at the British Grand Prix for the Saturday qualifying. A nice departure from all the chaos and an opportunity to wear my Speedmaster Professional on the Forstner flat link bracelet. Yeah, it rained, but it was great fun and the Speedy was the perfect choice. Now, by sheer miracle, we get my son his passport just one day before we all travel out from the very helpful team at the Newport Passport Office in South Wales. And we're all set to go. Now we flew from Gatwick Airport and they had a watch of Switzerland in the terminal. Whilst we were there, I tried on the Tudor Ranger, on the bracelet and hot off the press. And at 2,420 pounds, I was pretty impressed. I think the edges were pretty sharp. Sadly, didn't have any pictures taken, but yeah, not quite enough to walk away with it there and then, but yeah, suitably impressed nonetheless. I kind of liked it. Now, whilst we're talking about airport terminals, I'm starting to lose the point of luxury watch shops in airports, certainly in the UK anyway. Now, it wasn't long ago that you could get a good discount on most lines, but they're all high street prices now, and even foreign travellers can't recover the VAT easily. So I wonder if they're just now no more than a way of killing time. I don't know. Now, by this time, I was starting to feel a bit of a sore throat brewing, unsurprisingly, given what we've been through. But off to Florida we go. Now, it's fair to say the plane was full of coughing and sneezing. So I was in good company, but I wasn't allowing my little cold to break through and ruin my holiday. Now, initially, we had a good few days in Orlando on arrival. Highlights for me were the Hulk and the Velocicoaster rides at Universal. And I can honestly say I've never been on anything faster than that Velocicoaster. I think it was new last year or the year before. We were properly speechless coming off it, but absolutely loved it. We took a trip over to the Daytona Speedway and sneaked a few watch shots in with my travel watch of choice, my Omega Planet Ocean on the blue rubber strap. The perfect companion, and one that needs a little bit of a clean, so worthy of another video. It's not too cheesy yet, but you know, it's definitely time for a wash, I think. Yeah. Now, on the way through, we also took a trip to Titusville and the famous Space View Park. Now I did a few Instagram lives from there and it certainly exceeded my expectations, a real find. When we pulled up, there was a monument to the space shuttle missions and all the mission crew. And further on there was the Apollo mission area, which was amazing with handprints of all the astronauts, including the cosmonauts from the Apollo Soyuz missions. Now these brass casts were pretty damn hot, but I still managed to nestle my hands into Neil Armstrong's. Very similar hands, me and Neil. Now, there was also a bizarre memorial to the fallen during the race to beat the Russians to the moon. Now, this was a truly inclusive memorial area, and yes, they had the tragedy of Apollo 1, but there are also comments on the deaths of ground crew through all manner of horrifically described means. Maybe a little bit too much information for me. Moving on, we get to the Mercury Memorial area, the first space missions for NASA. And over on a wall next to each other, there were the handprints for Scott Carpenter and Wally Sherrard. Now, my wife was clearly pleased to learn that Carpenter is reported to have worn the very first Swiss watch into space on the 24th of May 1962 with a specially designed Breitling Cosmonaut, a derivative of the Navitimer, where the hour complication was adjusted to rotate every 24 hours instead of every 12 hours. A change personally requested by Carpenter to help him know the time during his multiple orbits. Now, this watch has recently been reissued and I can't wait to get my hands on it. As for Wally, well, we all know he took the first Omega into space with his CK2998 Speedmaster, so it was great to have these two watch icons next to each other. Now, we didn't make it to the Gemini area, as it was too damn hot and I was just getting a little bit too under the weather at this stage. Now, before we left, we had a wander down the pier and we could just see Cape Canaveral in the distance and the very large VAB clearly visible. What a great place to watch a launch. Now, during a shopping day, and to take it easy, we dropped into Mayer's, I think part of Watches of Switzerland, in one of the local shopping malls. Now, this one had a Tudor boutique with a number of nice pieces I could have taken there and then, including a black base ceramic. They also had IWC, where I had to try a few Pilot's watches on. Now, I do like the Pilot 43, and I've tried it on a number of times. In this instance, I tried it on in black with the leather band, and I really liked it. But my favourite of the day was one of the ceramic 44.5 squadron watches. This was the flying maces with the yellow accents and very reminiscent of the Speedmaster Apollo 8. Now I have a real draw to IWC at the moment, but I just can't find the right watch. Another video is on its way, I think. 
on one of the days we dropped into Disney's Epcot. I went there first in 1989 and it didn't look much different now. Now it may be shown its age but Disney are starting to bring it up to the 21st century and the highlight has to be the Guardians of the Galaxy ride which was amazing. However, one to avoid and definitely one to avoid if you have a heavy cold or a heart condition is the mission to Mars. So remember in Moonraker when Moore's bond is spinning in the centrifuge that tracks his henchmen as sabotage, well, it felt like that with knobs on. Well, for me anyway, including the absence of the kill switch as well. Now, if I'd have known it was a centrifuge and not just one of those shake and rattle rides, I'd have bailed early. But it's fair to say that this may have been the straw that broke the camel's back. Now, I felt pretty queasy coming off that one. Not sure I'll make it into Top Gun, but it was interesting to feel your cheeks just you know, disappearing back into your face. But that's not what I needed then, believe me. So that takes us to D-Day. Now I'm gonna describe how I felt at the time. Now this may help others spot early signs and give you a chance of getting help. Now I was lucky to be in a place that was able to get me to hospital quickly. I could have been out mountain biking on my own, remotely, although probably not with this cold, but you know, it could have happened anywhere. Now a few days before that, I was starting to feel pretty poorly. I had a hacking cough, I had a terrible headache, but you know, we're on holiday, so let's just push through, yay. I mean, my wife did say on the morning that, that we should stay home, but I'm like, nah, it'd be fine. So off we went to Volcano Bay, Universal's water park. It's a great day out, and I could drift along the lazy river all day. And you know, walking in, my shoulders and the top of my chest, it felt a bit odd. I felt a little nauseous, and you know what, I didn't know if I was going to make it, but you know, we soldiered on nonetheless. Now the feelings passed and we enjoyed time on the lazy river, the rapids, uh, one of those water rides. Now funnily enough, um, I said to my wife before I got on the water ride, that you know, I was wearing my Apple Watch at the time, which you saw in the picture, uh, and I'll do one of the ECGs where you hold your finger on the crown. Apple Watch said I was okay to go, so it gave me a clean bill of health, so off we went. Now, later in the morning after some light lunch, I started to feel a bit odd. Now, I'm struggling to describe because it was a mixture of severe heartburn that was really high in the chest with sort of a tingling down both my arms. Now, initially I thought I wanted to be sick, so walked at pace to the gents, nothing doing. So quickly went back to our seating area and started to feel really, really, really poorly, just like nothing else I'd experienced. So at this point we went off to the medical hut near the entrance and they were really good. I mean the guy there said I was probably having a heart attack and so he called an ambulance. I guess he seen more than I had. Now within what felt like minutes, but it was probably 20 or so, the first responders were upon me and before I knew it they sort of shaved part of my chest, attaching electrodes, threw some aspirin down me and asked me to pop a pill of nitroglycerine under my tongue. Now at this point they're very keen to establish if I had taken any Viagra. They didn't use the word Viagra, I think that was that they used um, erectile dysfunction medication. Now fortunately no, um, but I dread to think what the consequences would have been if I had. You're not gonna let this go, are you? You're as stubborn as a four hour erection. Well, she's long gone, so uh, you can go too. Oh no, you got me for another three and a half hours, pal. Go ahead, seek medical attention. I'm not going anywhere. You can't stay. I'm chaperoning my daughter's Girl Scout dinner in 45 minutes. Well, tuck me into your waistband and try not to pee up your shirt. So they whisked me off in the ambulance. Now, all I remember in the ambulance is the guy who was with me at the time shouting at the driver to sort of run the red lights. You know, they were clearly concerned. When we got to the emergency room later, I was triaged pretty quickly, but, but they weren't sure yet what the issue was. I was in so much pain, I mean, proper John Hurt stuff from Alien. So more nitro and a dose of morphine took the edge off a little. And at this point I was still in my wet shorts. Uh, I asked my wife to take a picture of me, which I struggled with. Yeah, thumbs up just to lighten the moment. I remember, uh, I mean, the, the measurements on my charts, it said that my my heart rate was around 170 over 94. I'm sure I remember someone saying it was like 180 or 190. I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm delusional at the time. But far higher than it should have been at around 120 over 80. 
Now we're getting towards 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And soon after, I was transferred to a ward where they monitored my troponin levels and hooked me up to a couple of drips to sort of ease my chest pressure. Now, if you didn't know, troponin is a protein in the blood that's released during a heart attack, which is quite handy. Now, by monitoring the raise in troponin levels, amongst other tests they did, um, it determined that I had a heart attack and not COVID or a chest infection or something other, or a combination. In fact, they screened me for pretty much everything and was pretty pleased to find out that all I had was a heart attack. Now, my family dropped in later with a change of clothes and my glasses so I could finally ditch the shades. I had a nice meal in the evening, well, nice for hospital food anyway, and they all came with a little edible flower, which was a nice touch. Now, I was nil by mouth from about midnight and then on the operating table by about 9am in the morning, the, you know, the next day, so less than half a day is amazing, really. Now, other than one of the nurses being a little rough with the shaver, I felt pretty comfortable in their hands. Um, the angioplasty procedure was to go in through the artery in my wrist with the catheter, but plan B is the old way through the old leg. And for good measure, I got a heavy shaving down there as well. Now, two weeks in, it's not too itchy, although I still have this strange sort of glove effect. You probably can't see, but there's like a, a line. I'll post them on the day pictures as well, just to give you an idea. The procedure was all carried out under local anaesthetic, so I was aware the whole time. Now, I didn't feel anything, uh, and I didn't know what was going on. All I felt was the catheter sort of snaking back down my arm when he'd finished. Very strange. Now, the surgeon did say he'd found a blockage that had now cleared down the stent that had been fitted you know, to keep the artery open. He also found plaque on some of the other areas, of my heart and some of the other arteries, but thought they were clear you know, under long-term medication, which I was quite pleased about, to be honest. So that was it. They kept me in overnight. I was discharged the next day. And it's fair to say I didn't get much sleep through the time in hospital as they were constantly screening me and sort of taking blood and putting needles in me. And as the nurse said, hospital is not a place for rest. But they were all amazing. So thanks to everyone at the Dr. P. Phillips Hospital in Orlando. Brilliant service. Now, after 48 hours of madness, we still had half a holiday left. The doctor said I should obviously take it easy and see a cardiologist in the UK on my return to determine my recovery plan. So for the rest of the week, I did just that. I took things very easy. Yeah, we still enjoyed the holiday. My wife and the boys, well, they still went on the rides while I just sort of bumbled around the parks on this sort of motorised <laughs> wheelchair we hired. In fact, I quite enjoyed getting under people's feet and being a right nuisance. But it's funny how you suddenly become invisible once you're in a wheelchair and you're lower than everybody else. And I've got real admiration for anyone that has to regularly use one. Now, on a trip to Disney Springs, uh, a nice place to go shopping, yeah, it's got free parking. Uh, we dropped into Luxury of Time by Diamonds International. Now they've got Hublot, Ulysses Nardin, Breitling, Zenith, and a load of other brands in there, plus loads of diamonds and jewelry and stuff, amongst others. But I was immediately drawn to the Zenith Chronomass, a sport they had nestling in the cabinet. I'd not seen one in the flesh before. This was the black dial version uh, on the steel bracelet. I think they also had a gold one in the cabinet as well. Now, I did take a picture of this one and have to say, I absolutely loved it. I thought it sat really nicely on the wrist. The, the lug to lug was perfect for me. The thickness was spot on. The bracelet felt superb. And other than the lack of uh, micro adjustment on the bracelet clasp, um, I thought it was yeah, really nice. Um, but as I explained to the lady in Mayers um, a few days before, you know, the exchange rate between the dollar and the pound is pretty horrible at the moment for any traveling Brit, so nothing to be done. Now, clearly, also, if you'd bought in the USA, you know, there'd be duty and VAT to pay on your return, and I can't condone not declaring. And that's one thing I'm hoping for in the future, is a significant rise in the import allowance of £390. Now, if we ever get that trade deal with the USA. So, I'm back at home resting, not working. The weather in the UK has been a bit disappointing, not too bad today but glad I missed the heat wave. Now, funnily enough, I'm in a bit of a, an information vacuum at the moment. Other than a brief chat with my GP, it'll be over two weeks since my operation uh, before I get any information from a cardiologist and get into that sort of recovery plan. Now, the bruising on my arm, yeah, it's almost gone, um, but there's still a feeling of unease. I sometimes feel that, you know, I get out of breath, um, yeah, that sort of lightheaded feeling. And even just sort of running through this, you know, I have to stop quite often to sort of catch my breath, more so than I ever did. Now, this could be uh, down to significantly lower blood pressure, 
uh, possibly a combination of the medication that I'm now taking. The good news is I'm here to complain about it. So what have we learned? Number one, never lose your passport. Always wear a chronograph, always wear a chronograph to motorsport events. What shops and airports? They're a waste of time. The pound to dollar exchange, well, it's a killer for buying stuff in the USA at the moment. Be kind and courteous to people in wheelchairs. The world isn't designed for them. And finally, Universal Parks are far superior to Disney. Yes, I think so. But most of all, watch out for telltale signs that you could be at risk of a heart attack. Don't think it won't happen to you. But really importantly, don't travel without good insurance. Now I dread to think what the bill would have been from the hospital if we hadn't had insurance. Uh, it's the one thing not to leave out from any holiday. And finally, get yourself some life insurance. Don't leave your family exposed. You just never know what's around the corner. Now hopefully it'll be the biggest waste of money you've ever spent. Now, I hope you found this useful. I appreciate you for making it this far and I hope I help someone out there that may have a similar that may be in a similar position. So before we do the sign off, let's run through some of the signs that you may be having a heart attack. First one, chest pain. A feeling of pressure, heaviness, tightness or squeezing across your chest. Pain in other parts of your body. It can feel as if the pain is spreading from your chest to your arms, usually the left arm, but it can affect both arms as it was in my case. Jaw, neck, back, your stomach. Yeah, general pain. Feeling of lightheadedness or dizziness. Sweating, shortness of breath, feeling sick or being sick. An overwhelming feeling of anxiety, similar to a panic attack. Coughing and wheezing. Now the chest pain is often severe, but some people may only experience minor pain, similar to indigestion. Now I felt pretty much all of these things and ignored them all and carried on. Don't do that. Get help, get it quickly, it could save your life. Anyway, I'm Andy, this has been the English Watch. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.